Morning, everybody. The August 21, 2018 School Land Board meeting will now come to order. First item on the agenda is approval of the minutes from the July 24, 2018 meeting, our last meeting, after the board has had a chance to review and assuming no questions or comments at this time, I can entertain a motion to approve said minutes for the record. Motion to approve. Second. A motion is made, seconded, and carried with one abstention to approve the minutes. Uh, next item on the agenda is the approval of the consent agenda as posted. Uh, I've not been informed of any last minute changes um, to the consent agenda, so it stands. Um, assuming no questions or comments from the board at this time, I can entertain a motion to approve uh, the consent agenda as posted. So motion. Second. Motion is made, seconded, and carried unanimously to approve the consent agenda. Next item on the agenda is number three, which is consideration and action on tracks, terms, and conditions for October 2nd, 2018, oil and gas and other mineral lease sale. Good morning. Joy McCauley, Energy Resources. Um, the Energy Resources staff is requesting school land board approval of the tracks to be offered at the October 2nd, 2018 oil and gas lease sale, along with the terms and conditions for said tracks. Energynet.com will perform the lease sale online. Staff is requesting school land board approval of 90 tracks for the lease sale. The attached exhibit summarizes by land type and price those tracks that have been determined to be eligible for the sale. The tracks to be offered for the sale cover approximately 20,000 acres and 24 tracks are in the Delaware Basin. The bidding will be on a bonus basis with minimums ranging from $100 per acre to $5,000 per acre, depending on location and geology. The royalty rates for all river and upland tracks will be a fixed quarter royalty, and the bays and gulf tracks, the variable royalty provision will be the same as the previous sale. Um, the primary term terms of the leases will be three years for all river and upland tracks, and submerged tracks will have a five-year primary term. The key areas for the sale um, are East Matagorda Bay, High Island in the Gulf of Mexico, and, the, and in Reeves County. Um, staff recommends approval of the tracks for the October 2nd, 2018 sale as presented. Any questions from the board at this time? No questions. No. I had, I had uh, one quick question. Are, are energynet.com leases um, similar to our traditional lease forms that now include uh, um, the ability for the state to recover um, in the event that a pay zone is not being developed. This might be more of a question for council um, where some of the newer leases, I guess, can result in if there's no development from the operator allows for the state to release uh, different pay zones. Correct. The, uh, the lease forms we're utilizing for this energy net lease are the, the most recent versions of our lease form, and they have uh, a little more restrictive language on uh, vertical severance and getting back the deep rights. So all of these will, will contain that language. Vertical severance is a much more eloquent term than I <laughs> tried, tried, to, <laughs> tried to say there. Thank you, Council. Um, any other questions from the board at this time? I uh, can entertain a motion to confirm the staff recommendation. Motion to approve. Second. Motion is made, seconded, and carried unanimously to approve uh, item number three. Next item on the agenda is number four, consideration possible action on resolution to release fund, <coughs> funds from the real estate special fund account and other matters in connection therewith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, for the record, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer. This agenda item affords the school land board the opportunity to consider the release of funds during the fiscal years 2020 and 2021 from the real estate special fund account, which I'll refer to as the RESFA, to either the available school fund or the State Board of Education for investment in the permanent school fund. Section 51.413 of the Natural Resources Code authorizes the school land board by resolution to release funds from the RESPA to the available school fund or to the State Board of Education for investment in the permanent school fund. Title 31, Texas Administrative Code, Section 151.6, requires the Chief Investment Officer of the GLO to perform an analysis regarding the potential release of money from the RESPA by July the 31st of each even-numbered year, provide the results of such analysis to the school land board, and make recommendations 
to the school land board concerning the potential release of money from the RESPA. Accordingly, I have performed the analysis required by and described in Title 31 TAC Section 151.6. The results are shown in the memo. As you can see, the amount available for release in fiscal year 2020 is $310 million. The amount available for release in fiscal year 2021 is $345 million. That's for a total of $655 million over that biennium. Title 31 TAC Section 156 also provides flexibility to the school land board to determine the actual amounts to be released to either the available school fund or state board of education for investment in the permanent school fund in each of the individual years of the next approaching fiscal biennium and the actual dates of the releases. To aid the board in making its determinations, I have attached a spreadsheet, which you should have available to you, and it describes several options for the board to consider in making its decision. Uh, if you look at the spreadsheet, you'll notice that it has two sections. The bottom section gives you Rusty, a can you hold one second? We're uh, electronically challenged here. Everyone except the chairman seems to be. No, she, get, she, she got me on. So <laughs> there we go. Thank well, you, Stephanie. What would we do without Stephanie? I know. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, so the spreadsheet, um, it's, as you can see, it's split into two parts. The bottom part gives you a history of the releases from the RESPA for fiscal years 2002 through 2019. Uh, you'll notice also in the second column amounts released directly to available school fund, there are two entries there. Uh, both for $300 million, one uh, for 2013 and the other scheduled for fiscal year 2019. So at the top, I have um, laid out the amounts that are available and I've given you several options. Uh, this is not an exhaustive um, list of options. Um, the first one is uh, option A, um, which would be to um, release $300 million to the available school fund for each of those years and zero to the State Board of Education. Um, the $300 million is uh, a limit, it's a constitutional limit on the amount that the board can release in one year. Uh, option B is very similar, $300 million uh, each year to the available school fund and then the remainder to the State Board of Education. And then uh, you can see the other options as they go along there. Uh, again, the options are somewhat uh, unlimited with regard to how you decide to do that. Um, my recommendation is that uh, a total of up to $655 million be released from the RESPA during fiscal years 2020 and 2021 to either the a, uh, Available School Fund or the State Board of Education for investment in the PSF or some combination thereof as determined by the board. I also recommend that the annual, uh, the total annual amount of each release from the RESPA be completed in four equal quarterly installments during each of the fiscal years 2020 and 21. So the, the, the actual amount and the allocation between the two is, is up to the board, but I'm happy to answer any questions you have about that. A couple, couple of questions here. First of all, on, on this, um, the history, this physical year history, history in 2013, Yes. Where you have 250 and 300, is that total 550? Yes. That's correct. And 19, the total is, again, 555. So something dramatic happened that they had enough to dispense to both at those large numbers? It only happened in two years, right? Well, traditionally in the past, we have, uh, the board has taken action to release money to the State Board of Education in, in each uh, even numbered year. And then in those two years, the board also took action to release money to the available school fund. So but is that beyond the calculated, the, the, 
algorithm that you go through to calculate what's available that yes. was that exceeded yes. the amount? Yes. Oh, it did. Okay. Yes. And the second question is, <clears throat> again, Rusty, I know we talked about this, but I'm still trying to understand. The available school funds, that goes directly into investment as opposed to the State Board of Education. The, the yes, the the money that if you release money to the available school fund, it goes directly to the available school fund, directly into the school system. If you release money to the state board of education, uh, it is invested by the uh, SBOE in the permanent school fund portfolio, the portion that they manage. So it just goes back into a portfolio. So historically, can you give me some idea as to how the money has been allocated? It has been preferably to the available school fund or I mean it seems to me if it goes directly in, into investment it's a better world for everybody that just if it goes directly into the available school fund I'm is sorry that true? if it goes directly into the available school fund well I mean it goes directly into investment it goes directly into the school system yes as opposed to state board of education can go <clears throat> into their portfolio companies sure um, you know, I don't have any direct insights into the, the minds of former board members about how they make those decisions. The, the board makes those decisions about how the money is allocated. So this, this will be your decision also. I'm not trying to walk on you. I'm trying to tag along. No, go right ahead. So, um, the available school fund, if we allocate money to the available school fund, what does the available school fund do with the money? You probably already answered it. I'm just slow-witted, I guess. So do they send it to the schools and they spend it on pencils and pens, or does it go into an investment if we send it to the available school fund? If you send it to the available school fund, it goes into the school system directly. And they can spend it however they want. I, but yes, I, I, I don't know the, the mechanics fine. associated with how it's spent or how it's allocated. But, but it's but not. If you send it to SBOE, they invest it. We in know that's going to, if we send it to SBOE, we know they're going to put it into an investment portfolio. That's correct. The available school fund, they can use it at their discretion for the betterment of the, of the school system. That's my understanding, unless council has a different interpretation. That's my understanding. The comptroller then certifies how much is available, and then it's distributed. They have a system in place to distribute to the school districts based on population, I believe, something K through, like that. K through 12. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And are these probably the only disbursements from our funds over those years or are there going to be other requests for disbursements from our funds request for disbursements i'm, I'm not sure i'm following uh, from you. the legislature maybe or i thought last year yeah, we, did. we sent a bunch of money to the, the year, yeah. general fund of the state of texas or something i believe that that's we, uh, that's the distribution in 19 in the right column amounts released directly to asf because in anticipation of the last biennium, we did authorize the, the $300 million distribution to the okay, ASF. Okay, so that comes after the, that's a separate action. I thought it was a, a separate action. I thought it was every, directly so, to the state. <clears throat> so um, every even-numbered year, we have to go through this, this uh, mechanism to determine how much is available and how much is released and to which entity it's released. Um, the action that you took last year was in addition to what you took the, uh, the year before. So the determination about how much to release and how to release it during fiscal year 18 and 19 had already been determined, and you additionally agreed to release $300 million during fiscal year 19 directly to the available school fund. But perhaps to answer your question, Scott, the options are to release to either SBOE or to the available school fund. It's not to release to general revenue, for instance. Okay. The statutory options are SBOE or a the ASF. Those are our only two choices. Correct. That's okay. correct. Are those two agencies governed by the same board? SBOE has a commissioner and then a board, and then a available school fund, I think, that is just a fund which then the comptroller then distributes by statute. Okay. It's not a, not a board. There's no board. Okay. There's it. no board for the, uh, for the ASF. Okay. So, Rusty, would you restate your recommendation? Or have you stated one yet? I'm happy to restate it. Okay. So, um, my recommendation is that a total amount of up to $655 million be released from the RESPA during fiscal years 2020 and 2021 
to either the available school fund, State Board of Education for investment in the available school in the permanent school fund or some combination thereof as determined by the board. I also recommend that the total amount of each release from the RESPA be completed in four equal quarterly installments during each of the fiscal years 2020 and 2021. So I'm recommending an amount up to $655 million to be distributed in four equal quarterly installments during those fiscal years 2020 and 21. But the determination about uh, which entity or which entities the money is to be allocated to is the board's decision. So how do we decide? Well, um, as uh, chair, I'll, I'll, you know, I'm, I'm leaning toward uh, option A. Um, I think for a variety of reasons, it makes sense to have a direct release to the ASF, um, particularly since uh, we're facing uh, the projections show a, a shortfall ranging between four and six billion. Um, in my visits with legislators uh, after our action last uh, legislative session, this is. Um, this is a meaningful number that can make a difference in, in reconciling budget numbers in, in a session that will have to deal with school finance um, and, and property tax reform. So um, the fact that this board can move um, in a historic fashion, uh, make a $600 million um, distribution immediately to the SF to, to aid the legislature, um, I think is a benefit to the work of, of you, Rusty, and your team. Um, I think it also will show the public uh, the high-performing uh, returns that you have delivered, uh, along with this board's determinations, to um, to be a really good steward of the of the taxpayer dollar, and so um, as well as the state lands that generate those revenues. So, um, I would like for this board to and and for staff to get more um, recognition of those accomplishments, and I think by doing that today um, would be one step in doing that. So I would move that we adopt uh, recommendation option A and make a uh, direct distribution of, of 300 million fiscal year 20 and 300 million in fiscal year 2021 uh, pursuant to the payment schedule that's um, laid out in the recommendation that Rusty's uh, provided. It's a long-winded motion, I understand. Just, just to be clear, option A is $300 million per each fiscal year 2020 and 21 directly to the available school fund. Correct. You may ask a question. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't expect you to know the answer, um, but I'll it's fool, a question I'll for you. <laughs> um, does the State Board of Education, have they run their, and maybe we don't even care, I'm just curious, but have they run their numbers based on what they do with their investment earnings and money, expecting to get money from us since they've received money from us at least from 2003 forward. And if they don't get money from, and I'm not against your motion, sure. uh, I'm just trying to learn. Um, if they don't get money from us, are there any ramifications that we haven't thought about? So I'll surprise you and answer that question. <laughs> Doesn't so surprise me, but if, I didn't expect If that. indeed uh, the SBOE is operating under the guise of the law, the law says the money will be released to them for investment in a permanent school fund. So it, it seemed those other issues seem irrelevant in the discussion. Yeah, just a point of clarification. If they're expecting to get 255 million from us and they've promised someone else earnings on that 255, then they wouldn't have those earnings. That's all I'm really saying. I, I, don't, I, I don't think it would be wise for them to expect to get any amount yeah. from us. The board makes that determination every even numbered year. So it, it, if, if they're thinking something else, it's, just, it's purely conjecture on yeah. their part. And I think part of the legislative intent, and I'm forgetting the, I may have, I'm looking over at council again, the, the number of the bill um, that required us to make this determination by September 1 or the end of the fiscal year heading into a biennium is to kind of telegraph to other entities, whether it's State Board of Education or legislature, what our determination will be so that there is um, time to make those assessments. That is correct, sir. Exactly. Yeah, that just those are all points of 
interest. So did you motion for A? I, I moved for to uh, pursue option A uh, based upon the payment schedule laid out in, in Rusty's um, recommendation. I approve. That's a second? It's a second. Okay. I vote yes. Yes. A motion is made, seconded, and carries unanimously to approve item number four. Thank you, uh, Rusty. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks for the kind words. Um, item five um, is presentation possible action on investment in Collingsworth Investments LP. Uh, since this does involve um, nature of a legal matter, uh, we'll enter into executive session pursuant to Chapter 551, Subchapter D, Section 551. TAC 071 of the Texas Government Code for discussion consideration regarding pending or contemplated litigation and or settlement offers to receive attorney advice for counsel related to item 5 on the docket and subsection 551 TAC 072 for discussion and consideration concerning purchase, sale, exchange, lease or value of real property related to items 5 on the docket. Following executive session, we will reconvene in open session. The open session of the August 21, 2018 school land board meeting will resume with item number five. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members, for the record, Rusty Martin, Chief Investment Officer. Approval of this agenda item will constitute your approval of an investment by TexGlow on behalf of the Permanent School Fund in Collinsworth Investments LP. The Investment Advisory Committee is recommending that the uh, TexGlow invests $75 million on behalf of the Permanent School Fund in Collingsworth. Collingsworth is a proposed $78.5 million separate account arrangement between TexGlow and Collingsworth Partners LLC, which is created primarily to develop and build U.S. senior housing projects focused on assisted living and memory care units, and secondarily to develop and build U.S. student housing projects focused on close to campus locations. The fund is expected to make 65 to 75 percent of its investments in the senior housing sector, 25 to 35 percent in the student housing sector, and 10 to 20 percent in other opportunistic real estate investments. TexGlo has a longstanding relationship with the Collinsworth team through the McKinney Fund and Company, which began in 2008 and has resulted in total original capital commitments of $100 million across two funds called 2009 McKinney Investment Fund LP, a $50, 50 million dollar commitment, and also a $50 million dollar commitment to 2013 Collin Investment Fund LP. Investment management staff and the Townsend Group conducted due diligence and analysis on the proposal through comprehensive document review and a series of meetings and discussions with the Collingsworth team over the past several months. In addition, the Collingsworth team made a detailed presentation to the IEC and to Townsend on June 25th of this year. In conjunction with this discussion, review, and analysis, investment management worked with Townsend and legal counsel to ensure that the proposed investment fits within the framework of the Tech Slow Permanent School Fund Real Assets Investment Policy Statement and is in the best interest of the Permanent School Fund. Therefore, the IEC recommends that school and board approve a $75 million investment in Collingsworth Investments LP. And I'll note, as always, that the approval of this transaction is contingent upon investment management's completion of the negotiation and finalization of the legal documentation associated with the proposed investment in Collingsworth. I'm happy to answer any questions. Any questions from the board at this time? A motion to approve. I'll second. Motion is made and seconded and carries with one abstention. I've submitted a recusal memo to file to approve item number five. Um, before we adjourn, f thank you, Rusty, for the presentation. Thank you. I uh, wanted to recognize Mark Mulligan and Susan Carroll, both with the Houston Chronicle. Sorry, I apologize for not recognizing you at the beginning. We always uh, welcome visitors, and uh, thank you for joining us at the Stephen F. Austin. Uh, there being no further business before the board, uh, the meeting is hereby adjourned.